Hey guys, I'm going to review Ryfield's Berger Panzer Tiger 1. This is kit number 5008, and it is not out just yet, but should be very shortly. The first thing to mention is that this is not a Berger Panzer at all. It is not a recovery vehicle. Um, everybody in the sort of Tiger-obsessed realm acknowledges that it was a probably um, explosives or mine-laying tank. Uh, but, you know, you see a crane, people think Berger Panther or whatever. Um, but we're just going to get that out in the open and then not really dwell on it, but the name isn't correct, but it's common, you know, so it's not surprising that they used it. Dragon has now announced this, a version of this vehicle as well, and again, they're calling it Berger Panzer, despite the fact that they have Dave Burden on staff, uh, they're also calling it the wrong thing. So everybody's calling it the wrong thing, but we all know what they mean. There was only one vehicle like this, and it was found knocked out or damaged in Italy in 1944. So it's, it's not like there was a bunch, there's just the one. Instructions are now what is standard with Ryfield, a uh, full-color book where they don't use a lot of it, but there are color um, sort of additions on each page to draw attention to things. Um, I thought I'd mention this box art um, was very well done. On the inside we have a very well laid out sprue map and the first of three color callouts. I'm not sure why we have this sort of very pale um, dark yellow. And over here we have what I would consider to be more accurate to Italian camo schemes, probably this one for myself actually. Uh, and then another of just yellow and green. Callouts are for MIG ammo. This page tells us where we need to put Zimmerit. It is everywhere on this Tiger, as it was a standard mid. I think I may try to match it with an ATAC set this time, as it really slowed down the build last time when I tried to do um, mine with Putty on their Fairman Tiger. Alright, so step one is very different than anything we've seen from them before. We have a single piece turret with two half um, inner pieces of the turret, and this mantlet, these two pieces being the same, but this being a very different outer piece, obviously. Then this thing uh, would be their late cupola, which we haven't seen from them yet. Uh, the assembly looks pretty straightforward. We've got the MG ring, the hatch, and the, uh, the sort of holder assembly for it, and a few parts. Uh, turret ventilator, interestingly, they have an armored cover, which I've never seen on a mid, so I don't think that's correct. A little bit of interior detail for that hatch as well. Here, the anti-aircraft MG, which we actually haven't seen from them either, with the standard mount that we always see on the mid to later Tigers. That looks about the same as it goes together for Dragon. We've got a few parts that go on this turret front here. Spare tracks in the turret going on the same way they did on the Fairman, with these sprues that hold them in shape. Escape hatch, uh, same assembly we've seen, and the tracks go together the same way, of course. Here, of course, more different stuff as no Tiger I've done from them or anyone who's had this crane before. Um, but we've got kind of about what I would expect as far as complexity level for this crane. And the winch, not too many pieces. Yeah, about five per step in here, a few less over here. It doesn't look too complicated. Now, I don't know when you run that string that they included through there, but we'll see. Then here we're finally putting the ring on the bottom of the turret. Just a few last pieces on the crane. It's not a very complex assembly, and I wouldn't expect it to be. So here it lists string assembly, it says. There is the string. We've got a few little plastic pieces that are involved with the end of the crane. And it's telling us how to have the string. If it's down or up and from the top. Then we get into more familiar territory. Here we have the lower hull assembly. Hull extensions on the front and rear look the same. Hopefully those go together well for me. Torsion bars and swing arms are exactly the same. Where we remove this to have them workable. Final drives that are workable, same sprocket uh, that we've been seeing. We have the later type. Then here, they're telling us to be cautious of the way that the tops of the exhaust stacks are aligned. Um, suspension going on if you choose to do it then. Uh, armor covers for the exhaust and just a few little bits on the rear plate. Uh, it does say to remove these two things here, which means they're using the exact same rear plate they used on all their previous Tigers, which is unfortunate. So, more parts for the workable wheels. 
the toolbox on the rear, exhaust shrouds, inertial starter adapter plate, very simple stuff. Then onto this one, jack and other small bits going on the rear. Onto the front plate, having us drill a bunch of holes because there's some more sort of uh, specialist equipment on the front plate. Building it up here and attaching it to the front plate before we attach the side plates, front plates, and side fenders to the hull. And then here is our other bits on the front, uh, the driver's vision slot and the M MG mount for the front. I'll be very curious to see if this is finally fixed. It looks like we have the same tools that we've been using, so they're telling us to remove a few of the clasps and just adding PE ones to other tools. All the holes to drill, um, if you're doing this right away, be mindful of the, that interference with that hammer up front. Tools going down into the deck plate and the actual door for the engine. It looks like we've got a new piece for this of the later type. Hatches are still of the workable type. This looks like the exact same as the previous kits. PE options for our tow cable holders, barrel cleaning rods, copper tow cables. Here we've got our light. Now it's interesting that the lights are up on the deck like an early. I'll have to check reference to see if that's correct. Um, they're also having you remove the mounts for the S mines here. I don't know a ton about this Tiger, obviously I will once I do a little bit of research, but all this looks the same as it would have on the previous Tiger, but I'm not sure that that's correct for that vehicle. Final assembly, turret onto deck, deck onto hull, and tracks on, and we would be finished. The PE sheet has our four grills. We've got, like I can see, shovel holders, enough uh, tool clamps for the whole vehicle. A few things I don't recognize here and here, or these, I'm not sure what that's about. Could be specialized to this vehicle. But enough PE, definitely, to make this thing sing. And nice weight to the sheet as well. Also included again are their Zimmerit tools. Um, I did not use them on the last one, I just used the trumpeter rollers, but it's nice that they include it in any kit that needs Zim. Decals are very sparse. We have 311 and 890 and a few Balkenkreuz. Of all of their kits that I've reviewed, I've still not been able to actually get to the decal stage. I always build them and they end up on a shelf, so I can't really speak to the quality of them. They seem all right. This is our string for the crane. Uh, it seems like string, should probably be okay. And as in previous kits for our tow cables, we have this excellent copper cable. I still think this is one of the best things they do. For plastic, we'll start with stuff that's new, just so that anyone who's seen my other ride field reviews and wants to see what's different about this kit can see it right away. The turret is separated into the outer shell and two halves of the inside. It's interesting how they do it. It is thinner than usual, but of course with the addition of this it will be about the thickness it was before. Detail looks okay. There's a little bit of what could be a sink in there, but that might be alright. I can't tell. That seems a little strange how that goes up. Overall it looks promising compared to the amount of sanding you had to do on their older turret. The interior bits only have a little slot for the vision block, and that's about it. Then we have this sprue, which appears to be what they're going to use is their mid to late sprue with some modified parts here for the Berger Tiger and a removed, my assumption is, rear plate. Because it's the same size and has four um, sprue gates, just like the uh, rear plate does on the sprue that is in here. We have side plates, the turret roof, the mantlet, the engine cover, two different types of cupola, the track change cable, bits for the, the barrel travel lock, and small bits that we just haven't seen yet. There's our turret roof. Now I think this will be exactly what we get in future mid to late kits just without these little guys here, which have to do with the crane. Well, it looks good. There is detail on the inside for possible mounting of interior parts for the later kits. There's the mantlet. That's the hatch for the cupola. This is a command antenna uh, storage tube. There's our hull sides.
track change cable is in a different configuration of the later type. We've got all kinds of very small parts here. I can't even identify what these are for, so I'll have to build it to tell you. I'm not familiar with them, though. There's parts for the ventilator. Now this is the deep weighting slash sort of armored cover for the ventilator. I don't think that should be on here. Barrel travel lock parts, but the look of it. Adapter plate looks good. Later light mount. There's the MG mount. Nice casting in that. Very nice. Look at that. Very cool. Escape hatch. Two different loader hatches. There's our two cupolas. Now one has these slits in it for rain runoff and one does not. This would be our later type of engine cover. That's the loader's periscope here. This is for part of the um, the hatch. It looks like that may be a command antenna pot, possibly. Not sure what else that could be. And I think these are actually just more parts for the barrel travel lock. Then we have this sprue, which is our crane parts. I am not a crane expert, so I certainly don't know exactly what I'm looking at, so all I can really show you is the fidelity of the parts. Um, we have lots of different parts for the crane, including this mantlet piece with sort of the welded over bit. Not sure if these are going to be together as cylinders when we have them in halves. That could leave some bad seams. Wheels look clean. There's a little mantlet guy. He would go that way. Nice texture. Hmm. Only problem with that is that uh, this tiger had zimmer it. So do they give us this nice cast texture and then we have to put zim over top of that. Again, cylindrical pieces that look to be in halves. That's not encouraging. Some are slide molded or didn't need to be done in halves. Parts look okay. Yeah, not seeing anything that jumps out as bad. Very crisp. Now we're on to sprues we have seen, but I was surprised to see this in this kit as well. This is the 503 sprue. So we have that specific 503 turret bin and toolboxes and lots of tools, jerry cans, jack, and lots of antennas. Here's that turret bin. I've got many of those now. There's our antennas. And these jerry cans, which are very nice. There's our jack parts. All this goes together very well. Another command antenna storage tube. Lots of tools with clamps, some without. And then there's toolboxes. Then we have this sprue, which dates from the 503 with interior kit and was also seen in the Fairman kit. We have our drive sprockets, our, our front plate early track change cable, our fenders, mantlet, uh, rear mud flaps, sides again, um, and then these air intakes, shrouds, and earlier style hull extensions. Hopefully they have fixed the issue with these though. So, uh, odd how this stuff does look different in a different colored plastic, and this gray plastic is very reminiscent of the uh, Tamiya uh, 35216, their, their early kit. It's been around for quite a while now. Everything still looks very good. I really like the bottom of their fenders here. Those are a little more noticeable than I've seen before. They're raised ejector pin marks there. Hull extensions. These side plates we won't be using because we have some on the other sprue. We have later style five holes. Another man right there looks pretty good. That is reinforced binocular. Five holes do still have a seam here, and we don't use them in this kit anyway, so that's all right. Shrouds look good, a little cleanup needed on the inside there. 
and then these intakes in two halves, just like Dragon. The issue with previous fenders was that these were not equal distant. So if you look like this notch should be in the middle of the separation between this, which it appears to be, but if you come down to this one, this guy is not. This guy's a ways over here from that. So I'm concerned that it's the same. Uh, I also thought it would be worth noticing that their spare track hangers could use a little dressing up with like some brass wire or something. There should be a little loop on the top of there. So then we have this A sprue, which has been in every kit they have made so far, even the Tunisian Tiger. What is missing here is our parts for the turret halves and some other bits. Honestly, I can't recall offhand. What is notable here is that we do still have all of the mantlets, including the Tiger P1, and the actual barrel. So you could technically make this into just a straight up mid production Tiger. Three mantlets gun sleeve, parts for the barrel, muzzle brake, uh, turret ring with teeth, and um, escape hatch, early cupola hatch, uh, ventilator. Not all of the turret bin though, just this part and this part. There's those mantlets that we've seen many times now. So we got standard uh, binocular, binocular Tiger P, and reinforced binocular. Interior for the ventilator, there's your gun sleeve. Early style muzzle brake. More parts for the muzzle brake. All this stuff still looks really good. There's our turret ring. Not a fan of these little tabs, but that's all right. Doesn't look like they have altered the size of this thing, but it's not used in this kit, so why would they? All this stuff still looks good though. Lots of bit for fivals on other builds. Also from the initial uh, kit from them, the Tunisian one, is this B sprue, which has lots of our hull parts. The actual top deck of the hull, the rear plate, now this is the same rear plate that they've been using, which I do have issue with. Front plate, we've got tools with clamps, we've got initial style fivals, we've got smoke launcher brackets, the fivel hoses, uh, eyelets for our tow cables, more bits for the fivals, uh, driver's vision slot, a type of jack, uh, more tools, different toolboxes including the Tunisian one, lots of stuff. So this is the thing I've been complaining about, uh, at least in the last build up. Uh, these brackets here would make sense uh, if you were adding fivals and no one was ever going to see them, but they, you know, they're not supposed to be on a Tiger. You're supposed to just have these two guys here and none of this. So I suggest taking these off right away and then trying to either replace this detail or somehow leave it intact. Um, and they all also are having these molded in so you may need to remove them depending on the manufacturer date of the Tiger. Apart from that, piece looks nice though. Our upper deck I have had some issue with lately. Um, some of these holes, at least well one of these holes putting the shovel in a place where I can't close this hatch, so I'm going to be very, very careful of that on this build. Other than that, I don't usually have a problem with it. It's a very nice piece. Looks like it's still that good. We do have no S-mine mounts molded. Early engine cover. We won't be using this one. There's the MG ball mount. These ventilator covers and stuff look nice. There's the driver's vision slot. That looks good. Uh, we got a broken part on our 5 volt mount. 5 volt hose connectors look good. I can save these for a different build. Hoses look good. It's always nice that they include these. There's our sort of 503 specific uh, track mountings. Extinguisher looks good. Eyelets look good. Jack block and toolboxes still look good. I don't know if it was a mistake on Ryfield's part, but we should not have these screws here by the ball MG for deep weighting. If this is supposed to be a mid-production Tiger, you, it, deep weighting had been removed by then, so 
Um, those headlights that were going up here and this, this is all early production stuff, so I'll have to do some serious research on whether or not this was a mid-tiger. I was under the impression that it was. Then we have these two sprues, which are our suspension sprues and the same as we've seen in previous kits. On there is lots of bits, not just suspension. We have the larger idler, a wheel without the rubbers, the later and early type sprockets, Torsion bars with swing arms, final drives, all of the movable bits for the wheels, the exhaust, the armored covers for the exhausts, and lots of little small bits including fuel filler caps and uh, like little tow hooks and stuff. Many pieces. Again, this all looks pretty good. Nice cast texture there still. I wouldn't be using these. These look a little thick. These are the uh, smoke launchers with stuff in them, but they're not called for on this kit anyway. There's our sprockets, our early and later type. Final drives look good. Torsion bars looking good. There's that really excellent idler arm. The movable bit for the final drive. Pistol ports, which wouldn't be used on a mid. All these little parts look good. Tow hooks, wing nuts, and there's the smoke launchers without anything in them, still a bit thick. Then these two sprues, which are our early type road wheels. On here is just the four different types of wheels we get on Tiger One early or mid. Detail is still looking very nice. They have great wheels, these kits. Not much to complain about there. Clear parts are actually, um, has our early cupola piece and tons of periscopes and vision blocks. They seem softer than the other plastic, but plenty clear enough. You can see how it's not very cloudy at all. I've had no problems with their clear stuff. So this is the hull. It is the same lower hull as is on all of their kits with the ability to add the interior. All of the mounting points are there. Very thick um, where it needs to be so it holds its shape very well. Double scalloping here, bump stops look nice. Anything that needs to be molded in uh, looks really good. There's a look at that scalloping. This is the mount for where the suspension goes. The plate separation there. Very nice looking. Now, they have that stranger way of doing the hull extensions where it's this whole piece that works alright. No better or worse than dragons I would say. Bump stops look really nice. It's a very solid base for their kits. So lastly it's our tracks. These are the model casting style late tracks. We have four sprues of pins and guide horns and we have this box of just track links. This is what the track links look like when you put a few together without the guide horns yet. So that's the detail on them. There's the cleats. They look really nice. They articulate very well. And they're very sharp. No ejector pin marks, no flash. Really nice tracks. I love the way they articulate. The four sprues with guide horns and pins have guide horns in the middle and then pins in the jig on the outside. The pins are separated into ones and twos. And there's your guide horns. They are not easy to clean up and they're very fragile, but they look really good and articulate really well. So that's the uh, first look in box of Ryfield's Burger Pins or Tiger One. Um, I have to check on the accuracy of these headlights and you know the early front plate. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be correct or not. I know Dragon is hot on the heels. They'll have one of these out really soon. So it'll be interesting to compare them. I know Dragon's has molded on Zimmerim, which is going to be a definite selling point for a lot of people. It is a ton in the box and it's very encouraging, but uh, there are some accuracy issues with the original vehicle that I'm concerned about. Um, but it does look really good, so I'm going to have to start building it.